Hey there, all you fabulous and phenomenal ladies. This is your girl, Jill of Jill and Trail, and thank you so much for tuning in. As always, we got some juicy stuff for you. Oh my God, a couple of weeks ago, we were in Charleston, South Carolina, and we had the launch event, and it was amazing. Oh my God, people were falling out of the room. It was so many people there. We had such a great time. We had fabulous shoes, fabulous outfits. It, everything was just fabulous and of course we talked about fruitful relationships our favorite topic and we can't do anything about keeping the faith so we talked about that as well so tonight i just want to share with you one of the many questions that came out there were so many questions that were asked we had people to write the questions down about lies they were told as it pertained to dating and there were so many questions we could not answer them all then and we said we would try to answer as many as we can on our YouTube channel and do our blog, blog and just different mediums. So let me share a question here. One are the lie that this young lady was told and she said that we have to live together first to know if things will work. Talking about, you know, before a guy and a girl gets married, you know, or really get into get married, that they have to live together first. And we want to say that is definitely a lie, myth, whatever you want to call it. And what I would say is true because I, I had even when I was dating my husband, I had people who encouraged me to do that and say you got to and you can't, you don't know somebody until you live with them. That, that's not true. You know, if you've been following our ministry at all, you will know we are much believers of, for one, you know, having that strong spiritual foundation and having a, learning to listen to God and align yourself with what the Word says. And not only that, being very attentive paying attention so I just have two quick tips that I'm going to share with you to help you to evaluate a situation because living with a guy is, is not going to cut it for you a lot of times what you end up doing is giving way more than you should give more of yourself physically sexually you end up giving more of yourself emotionally and you become drained and sometimes a guy at the end of the day may decide you know what this really is not working for me and now you've already invested all of this and pretty much given everything and you come up empty and that's why sometimes it's when we deal with so much emotional baggage because we allow ourselves we make ourselves exposed to these type of situations leaving us abused and you know just kind of feeling abandoned or rejected when things don't work out so I'm gonna give you two quick tips or things you can do to see whether he is you know as far as his living how would that work out for you without actually living with him so the first thing I would say is communication is key. You have to ask a lot of questions. You need to make sure when you're dating that you're asking someone, hey, what do you do in your spare time? What do you do on the weekends? What are some of your hobbies, habits? What do you like to do? Do you cook ever, <laughs> you know? Um, how do you keep up with the house cleaning in your home? Um, how often do you clean? You can ask these questions. You know, you don't have to necessarily be in the, in the in loss in the stars and not having a clue and most people especially men are very forthcoming with this information they don't feel the need to lie and they just let you know you know and I know me and my husband before we were married we had this conversation and I told him about my level of cleanliness and kind of the things I did you know he knew that I cooked sometimes a couple of times a week you know I did my laundry regularly um, you know he, he kind of had an idea of what my routines were and how I was keeping up with the house. But I did tell him, I'm also, you know, I like to do ministry, you know, I like to, I do a lot of things. So I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time house cleaning. And I tell him, at some point, we're going to have a maid that comes in and helps supplement our household chores. So these are the type of things when you're coding someone, you're dating, that you need to be asking the question. Sometimes we'd be so afraid to ask. And you don't have to make it about you. You're not saying, well, so when we get married, how would you be? No, no, no. You're just asking in general, how are you with your housekeeping? How are you with the things you do? So that's the communication. Communicate, communicate, communicate. Ask a lot of questions. Even if you got to sit down and write down 10 questions. And I'm actually going to tell you about, I think, oh my God, I should have got the name. But I believe it's Dr. Robin Smith. Who wrote a book about lies at the altar and the truth about gray marriages and she says a lot of good things in there everything on there i don't necessarily agree with but you can google her 276 questions that you should ask before you get married 
and that will help get you on the right path to make sure you're asking all the right questions and be prepared to answer every single one of them. So uh, everyone, every single one you at least ask, right? And the second thing is we are big advocates are of observing. When you are in the right place spiritually, you can observe that person. So it's, let's say he invites you over, you guys are doing a double date uh, or maybe having a family dinner at his house. Okay, that's also opportunity for you to kind of observe the upkeep of his home and, you know, how he is around the house and, and things of the sort. Of course, when people are having something more formal like that, they're going to probably have it in the best place. So you can't say, oh my God, his house is spark spotless and it's how I keep it all the time. You can just ask, maybe not at that time, but you just kind of got to feel it out. But at any rate, we just want to encourage you and let you know that don't believe the lies. Oh my God, so many lies are being told today and sometimes it's even hard to know what is real and what is true. But I'm telling you, this here, living together before marriage ain't a business. You know, um, it's not, not something you want to do. It just it's best to get the marriage squared away, understand what you guys are, and then kind of go from there. So that's all I have, but I would be remiss in my duties if I did not tell you about this amazing event that's coming up. So on May 9th and 10th, we're having an amazing event, and we want you to come out. Go to our website, fabulousiam.com, to learn more. This event is going to be amazing. We're going to be talking about how to have fabulous faith. We're going to be talking about how to have fabulous faith fashion we have a fashionista that's going to be just really telling us how to get our stuff together on a shoestring budget how you love those apples oh my god i'm so happy and excited i can't wait it's going to be fun and also we have um myself and, and my sister trail going to be telling you a lot about how to have fruitful relationships and yes that's relationships as far as pertains to dating a man all that good juicy stuff but before we even get out to that we're going to learn about really how to have an intimate relationship with God. That's really where it all started. And then we build on that and learn how to really truly love ourselves, have confidence like never before, how to maintain and sustain ourselves as women in waiting. Also for the married woman, we want to talk about how to start that marriage out on a strong spiritual foundation and how to make it fabulous and fun all at the same time. So this is Jill, Jill and Trell. Founders of Detail Movement, don't forget to go by FabulousIAM.com and subscribe to this blog. And also share this video with your friends on social media because you know they want to check it out. Love you all. God loves you best. Until next time. Bye-bye.